Welcome to the April 2023 Q&A session. This comment is from RC. It was left on my Orient Rack review. Is this a joke? I hope so. Anyway, thank you for your angry grandpa butthurt delivery. It was just what I needed to pull the trigger. I bought it for a 130, and he's spelling American without the A, so it's pronounced like American. <laughs> okay, I'll go back a little bit. 130 American. <laughs> Angry dollar from an official reseller with two years EU regulations plus one year extra warranty. Thanks, Angry Grandpa. Don't forget to take your meds next time. Chapeau. He sounds like an angry French guy. I see what he's doing. He's engaging in generational warfare. That's fine. I hate the youth. I detest their baby soft, non wrinkly penises and their glistening balls that are taut in their ball sacks. I'm a Gen Xer. My balls droop so low in their thin, leathery ball sack that they slap against my kneecaps. So fuck you, youth of France, and fuck your beautiful, tender, glistening French ball sacks that, when licked, taste like ripe, succulent peaches. Also, I hate how the young generation can go for hours on end without involuntarily shitting their pants. It's unnatural how much control these whippersnappers have over their bowels. Fuck you, bowel controllers. Fuck you all. The next comment is from DZBZ. He left a recent comment in my Islander Seiko Turtle homage review that I did about three years ago. The watch has since been discontinued. I won't cover our entire correspondence because... DZBZ wrote a novella's worth of text. Feel free to read the whole thing yourself. I haven't deleted any of it. DZBZ kept accusing me of plotting to give Mark, the president of Long Island Watch, those other people who made that turtle that I was reviewing, uh, he, he's accusing me of plotting to give Mark bad reviews. And I kept asking him over and over, what the evidence he had to support his accusation. At a certain point, it became clear to me that he was just an idiot. Uh, so, uh, you know, he had no concept of what evidence was, nor any knowledge of how to use logical reasoning. So I started just treating him like the idiot that he is. Dizabizi said the following. I also watched the AmeriCourt's review. You said that their courts movement is crappy, even though you never make it clear why it is crappy. All right. Not only did I talk at length about how lacking in features the AmeriCorps movement was, I showed some really smoking gun video about how shitty this movement performed. Let's take a quick look at it to refresh our memories. Look now at how the Cal 7122 movement performs. Notice the second hand jump back when I pull out the crown. Notice how when I push the crown back in, I have to wait about a second for the second hand to start up again. The idiot then goes on to say, you were also obsessing over the fact that you could see his underwear. He's talking about the president of uh, Fine Time Peace uh, Solutions. Um, I'll, I'll continue what his quote uh, starting now. Um, uh, made references to his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell a lie. Yes, I did. Okay. Saying that if you were to enlarge the, <laughs> the image of his crotch, one could see <laughs> his, text, his testicles and, quote, yellow stained underwear, unquote. 
Uh, if, you know, it, it, I think it was a really funny joke, actually. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think there is ample evidence that you bash watches and their manufacturers in a manner that is not useful to uh, to, to either the manufacturers or your reviewers. Your obsession with a CEO's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> is not germane to one's understanding of the quality of that CEO's watch movement, but it was very germane to his testicles. <laughs> no, I, that was me saying that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Again, this idiot doesn't even understand what evidence is. In my making fun of Kunal, the CEO of Fine Time Peace Solutions, uh, well, looking like a homeless guy is not evidence of anything. I've worked in a homeless shelter. I've actually stayed at homeless shelters. I've been homeless. Kunal looked like a homeless guy who had been out on the streets for a while. The homeless generally wear donated clothing that's in much better condition than Canal's clothing. Canal looked like a really hard up uh, a homeless guy. The stuff about my being able to see Canal's uh, testicles through his thread-worn clothing was an obvious use of hyperbole that anyone with half a brain could understand. I used this hyperbole to draw attention to how unprofessional Kunal looked. He slouched, and like Mark, his shirt wasn't tucked in. He wore threadbare pants that should have been thrown on years ago. This Mickey Mouse presentation that Kunal gave was consistent with the unprofessionalism the company showed me by not answering my questions. The question about the end-of-life indicator was not the only question I asked Fine time, uh, uh, fine time piece solutions. They just completely ignored me. Everything about Canal seemed clownish to me. His clothing, his company's treatment of the public, uh, his uh, use of the American flag, or, or maybe I should uh, say uh, misuse of the American flag, and most importantly, his Mickey Mouse movement that I reviewed. If you're going to present yourself like a clown, I'm going to treat you like a clown. I did not distort a single fact about AmeriCorps' shitty movement in my review. Kunal and his accomplice, Mark, are running a clown show. And my job as a reporter is to keep them as honest as I humanly can by exposing not only their products, but they're bullshit. I really resent when people use the American flag to sell shit. It just fucking irks me. President Bush 41 and his gonad sucker lying piece of shit war criminal son, Bush 43, sold out the way too gullible American people with two bullshit invasions of Iraq that cost indescribable amounts of carnage and suffering that millions of people in the Middle East, as well as U.S. veterans and their families, are still suffering with today. When Mark and Canal promote their joint AmeriCorps venture with empty made-in-the-USA slogans and slap American flags on case backs, quite sloppily, I might add, they're selling us a call to patriotism, not technology. They know they can't sell us technology because they know that the Japanese and the Swatch Group are decades ahead of them in quartz technology. All they have at their disposal is bullshit calls for patriotic buying. Kunal's logo is an appropriation of the American flag. Kunal also uses appropriated graphics on his website of the American flag. Does Kanal give anything back to the country whose symbol he's appropriating? I didn't see anything in Fine Time Solutions job advertising, which in itself appropriates the flag, which expressed an interest in hiring veterans. Who knows? Maybe Kanal has hired a veteran. There's no way of knowing. 
I like to see Canal make more of a commitment to hiring veterans. I like to see him hire veterans wounded physically and or mentally by war. I want to move now into the realm of speculation. I have no actual facts to back up anything that I say from here on. Why is it that Mark decided to move the crown of the AmeriCorps from the 4 o'clock position to the 3 o'clock position? At first, it doesn't seem to make any logical sense. The AmeriCorps' design is a copy of the Seiko XKX, a design that Mark uses in many uh, other of his watches. This is a classic, extremely popular, and extremely good design. For me, it's obvious why Mark deformed the case of the AmeriCorps to the three o'clock crown position to the detriment of the ergonomic and aesthetic excellence of the Seiko XKX design. He needed to do this because fine timepiece solutions doesn't offer a movement that supports a four o'clock crown. Why do you think Mark is going through all this trouble to create an AmeriCorps watch? I believe that the AmeriCorps is a feeler, a test of some sort. Mark has steadily developed a pretty huge catalog of watches. Take a hard look at the huge volume of customer reviews that Mark gets for his numerous watches. Probably only a tiny fraction of the people who buy his watches leave comments. Mark is most likely selling an awesome amount of watches. If you were Mark, other than creating more avenues for profit by creating more watches, what would you do to secure your hold on the watch market? You'd do the same thing that J.D. Rockefeller did. You'd attempt to control the means of production. Find Timepiece Solutions is not only the key to controlling the U.S. market, but gaining a foothold in the global watch arena. The pandemic has taught U.S. companies that global supply chains are unreliable. If you don't have to be reliant on the Japanese or the Swiss, it gives you a lot more leverage. It wouldn't surprise me if Mark has some share in Fine Time Peace Solutions. Even if he doesn't, a partnership with a domestic movement maker is hugely advantageous to him provided the movement maker can create a competitive movement. It's hard to predict the future. If I were betting on what's going to happen, I would bet that the Islander slash AmeriCorps joint production is going to be a failed venture because the result so far is a shitty watch with a shitty movement. Also, Mark and Canal's Pilot AmeriCorps watch, the Islander USA Assembled AmeriCorps Field Watch, has already been discontinued. While I don't see LIW ever becoming a watch company like Seiko, which has the huge advantage of not only making their own movements for their watches, but selling them as well, I do see LIW as being on a trajectory of huge growth and eventually overtaking Timex if it hasn't already. Please like, please subscribe, and most importantly, lend me your watches so that I can review them.